During the summer months, striped bass can be found all along the northeast coast, with big schools oftentimes taking up residence in key locations as they migrate north to colder water in search of food. One such location that sees more than its share of big schools of stripers is Cape Cod Bay. Unlike many of the great striper hotspots up and down the coasts, what Cape Cod Bay lacks for structure, rip lines, or choke points it certainly makes up for with bait fish that is plentiful throughout the season. On this occasion, I was heading out of the Sandwich Boat Basin at the east end of the Cape Cod Canal with good friends Russ Stevens and Jim Ole, where we would put the latest in electronic innovations to work for us to locate and catch big stripers well into the night. We just put in the Sandwich Boat Basin we're pulling out of the east end of the canal. We're heading out. Today what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to use your electronics to locate fish. After you locate them, we're going to hopefully drop some live eels on top and see if we can't pick up some nice striped bass. Hang with us guys. i got Jimmy Old, Russ Stevens. We're in for a good day. What we've been doing this afternoon is that Jim's dialed into a pretty good network of fishermen out here. Buddies of his, he grew up in the area, has fished it a long time. Um, most of the boats out here are running some sort of side scan. So we're on the radio and everyone's running a side scan at the same time uh, and it's alerting the others when you find the fish. Hey Jimmy, I got him back here. Come back to the creek, Sandwich Creek. All right, heading your way. Come back. Come back here. We just marked them off the starboard side of the boat. And when you're seeing marks off your side scan or your sonar for that matter, they're already behind you. Right? The nature of the transducer position, it's in the back of the boat. So when you're seeing it, they're behind you already. So we know that off the starboard side of the boat, approximately 70 feet uh, to the side and 50 feet behind us, that's where we're marking the fish. So we just dropped an eel on them, hopefully we'll connect. Russ, what kind of gear that you like? I think it's a matter of personal preference what rod you use. I like an eight foot rod throwing eels. Um, I think you, can, you don't have to put quite as much uh, into it when you cast. I got one. There, there you go. go. Oh, it's already started. This is why we get up in the morning, right here. Jim had marked him right off the back and just dropped an eel down. We're in 30 feet of water. What do you got, a little St. Croix there? Yeah, it's an eight foot St. Croix Tide Master and I got a Quantum Cabo 50 on. Jimmy's on too up there in the bow. Jimmy Old's tight. We're gonna bring this guy to the boat. Open up. Russ, I'm gonna let him go, his mouth pinned. Beautiful fish, walk him one more time, we got him. There he is. Beautiful fish, using your electronics to locate fish. Jimmy Old's on a fish on the other side. Russ Stevens, we haven't been at 10 minutes, he's picked up his first fish, 20 plus pounds. He's buttoned. All right, I'll unhook him, you wanna go help Jim with his fish? I'm gonna fish, help Chris. him, that's yep. beautiful fish, Russ. There we go. You know, it's about 20, 25 pounds. There's been a ton of these. There's been some 40s, 50s mixed in as well. In addition to some smaller fish, but we're gonna get this guy back in the water now. There he goes. Perfect. Oh, look at the shoulders on this guy, huh? 
Oh, there you go. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, Jimmy, I think you got frost beat, man. <laughs> look at this. Guys, yeah, look at there. the size of the fish Jimmy just picked up. He definitely put, a, I want to say, seven to eight pounds on a, on Stevens' little Kublai. Yeah, that one's up around 30 pounds. It's yeah. got to be, right? Didn't you That's say, a Jim? gorgeous fish. When we come back, the fishing heats up as the sun drops. Here we go. We are on triples. Sometimes you just don't stack up. <laughs> <laughs> you know? All right, Mike, heading your way. We just got called in by our buddy both that the fish are on there. Now the thing you have to do is you can't knuckle it. If you turn around and you'll send a you knuckle out of the fleet and you start moving, yeah. everybody and their mother knows that there's fish that are being caught. Somebody just picked you up on the radio and you're moving. So you gotta do a little meandering. Go off here a little bit to starboard to see if we can relocate them. Jimmy, this is a great win for this, so isn't it? You know, a yeah. northeast wind right now. You know, we get the old harbor. We have Squirtons Creek up this way and then Barnstable Harbor. So you have essentially all this bait flushing out of these estuaries really gets the uh, feedback on. Yeah, there's been a lot of mackerel in the canal, too, and uh, peanut bunker, right? So, I mean, the canal has been on fire the last couple weeks. We were there fishing the canal about a week back, and the bait was coming right up on the shore to avoid the striped bass from, from gorging on them. Looks like Tom's on them over here. We're covering about 10 miles of beach here, so it's nice to have buddy boats out here. Um, when you're out here searching these fish down, um, you know, search anywhere from 5 to 10 feet out to 60, 60 plus feet. So you can cover a lot of water. Cover a lot of ground with the electronics. We're seeing right now in, you know, 25 feet of water. We have it set at 80 feet either side, so we're covering 160 feet of the bottom. Yeah, I got him thick under me, Judge. Yeah, here we go. There he is, Russ. Yeah, I was just reeling it in quick to take another cast, getting it away from another boat. It was just skipping it along the surface. All of a sudden, something whacked it, missed it. I dropped it back down, and then I actually managed to hook it. Could have been a few couple fish, you know, just following it up from the bottom. Come on. Here we go. Oh, there, there we is. go. Chris has got one now, too. I think we hit a preschool here. Yeah. A little guy. That's a little guy, probably 25 inches long or something like that. More aggressive. We kind of ran over a pile. We were looking at the uh, side <laughs> scan. <laughs> The structure scan out on the sides, out 80 feet to either side. Below us, there is a pile of fish on the screen. This guy's a little bit bigger. Ah, he's about the same size as you, Russ. This is where the leader comes in. Oh, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this guy up. Beautiful fish. Jimmy Old's on, Russ Stevens on, and I was on. That's three guys. Let's go see what Jimmy's got. So you got a nice corner jaw hook there. So that's a respectable fish, you know. Any other day of the week or any other place, we'd be psyched to catch a fish like that, or a bunch of them. Uh, it's funny you get spoiled out here because so many of the fish are 20 pounds and up. But that's a gorgeous fish. Get them back in the water and try and get a bigger one. Best thing you can do, guys, after you've landed a couple of fish, check your gear. If you get a big fish on there, it'll tend to rough up your fluorocarbon leader. And sometimes that even a striped bass can kind of rough up your main line. These are the days, Russ. Right. You don't do this enough. It's fun, a little different too. It's a nice opportunity to fish with some lighter gear. Like you say, you don't have all the boulders and stuff like that around. You have good visibility, and you that makes it a lot of fun. And because you know, I'm so used to having to fish in, like you said earlier, in the rocks. So you're at that 50, you know, 50 pound fluorocarbon leaders. But out here, you really can't get into trouble. You can get, you can get into the weeds, but you can't get into trouble. There's not a whole lot of rocks these guys are going to find a home on. Right, I mean, you just set your drag you know, relatively light. Yeah, have fun playing them. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I haven't fished it much. I really just started this year. Jim turned me on to it. 
What's neat about this fishing, it's very different, guys, from, from most of the kind of fishing that you're gonna do. It's quick drifts, it's locating the fish by using your electronics, and then getting a couple of casts on them and moving again. Jimmy's tight. You got any size to him, Jim? Uh, seems like it's a little bit better. Yeah. There you go. Oh, yeah. Well, we got two nice fish on. Jimmy's going on. Jimmy, yours looks a little bit better. Yeah, this is a good fish. Decent fish right there. Uh, there you go. That's a definitely a decent, more decent fish, right? About 36 inches, I guess, right? Yep. 34? There you go. Let Jim do the honors here. Russ, you know it's funny, I was doing the exact same thing as you. I was retrieving it quick. These guys were a little picky, but uh, he wasn't picky at all because he just came up and smoked it. We've been fishing just at the east end of the canal, about three miles out down towards Sandy Neck. We've had a great day fishing out here with Captain Jim Old, good friend Russ Stevens from Navico. Hang with us when you come back, should be into some nice fish. That's what's great about this spot here. You're only about three miles from the launch. You know, you don't have to go too far to get on these fish. It's also nice. I mean, there's not any boulders. There's not any shallow water. Uh, there's very few hazards you have to look out for. And the water tends to be calm. In the summer, you've got the prevailing southwest wind. And you're right in the lee of Cape Cod when you're here. So it's a rare opportunity to get in some flat, calm water. Basically, what we're doing now is just free spooling it. You know, some people like uh, live line air bait runner reels. What I like, to, I like to be able to feel the line actually go through your fingers. So there's a, you know, it's obviously a big difference between just a, a live eel taking a little bit of line and the momentum of the boat, but you do feel that pick up the second a bass bites. These fish are moving quick, but what's nice about it, using your buddy boats, Jimmy probably knows the entire fleet out here, but there's three or four guys that are really working close with us. So we're getting that call in and we're doing the same back though. You gotta return the favor though. If you don't return the favor, they're not gonna call you. That's Bobby Larson. He won a Striper Cup boat like four or five years ago. Oh, here we go. That seems like a decent fish, huh? Yeah, Russ? It's, it's fighting. Ah! So Jim and I work a lot of shows, and wouldn't you say the number one question we get is about structure scan? One thing that we always hear is, well, I have it. My screen doesn't look like that. I mean, they look at our um, demo files and, you know, with show pictures of rocks and submerged bridges and trees. The point that we always try to make is, yeah, it's, structure scan is great for identifying different sorts of structure. Well, like what we're doing out here today, I think is an even better use of it, wouldn't you say? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um... You know, we have a pretty flat bottom, no structure, sand and mud out here. We're using the structure scan to find the schools of fish. That's basically how we use it uh, here in the bay. When you have traditional sonar, whether it's ours or anyone else's, you're cutting a very small path underneath the boat where you can actually see fish. Structure scan, you can go up to 300 feet on either side of the boat, so you can see up to 600 feet. So now you're cutting a path through the water of visibility of 600 feet instead of 20 feet. So you've just increased your odds exponentially of finding fish in an environment like this. Looks like we got something on the screen here, so let's get the lines back in the water. Uh, Jimmy's got one. Yeah, Jimmy, nice fish. I call that my Kool-Aid set. <laughs> oh yeah. This guy feels like a bluefish. He's pecking away at it. That was a pretty good run right there. You know what? This is witching hour right now. You got the last light. We are on a pile of fish right now. We're probably not 300 yards off the shore. Jimmy's tight with a beautiful fish. 
we got some nice fish. It's a nice healthy fish, huh? Solid, yep. looks well fed. But Chris has got another one over to the other side. We'll get this guy back swimming. He already rolls on the surface. Usually when the fish come up on the surface like that, it's a nicer fish. Guys, this right here is what you get if you use your electronics. You dial in the structure scan, you stay on top of the school, and you got a captain like Jimmy Old, and a good friend like Russ Stevens that help you learn the structure scan to put you on a school of fish to catch something like that. That is a beautiful fish, 25 to 30 pounds. All right, let's see if we can't find these fish again. I got a nice fresh eel. When you really dial in the screen, what's really cool about it is you can almost tell the size of the school you're on from looking at your marks on the screen. With a smaller fish, you're going to have these smaller marks off to the side. Oh, there's a pearl. That's a nice fish there, huh? Nice fish. I tell you, when this is the average fish you're catching on a given night, that's a great night. Said most days you go out and catch two fish like this and you call it a great day. Obviously, we're fishing out here at night, which is really cool. We got probably about 20 to 30 boats all around us. And what's nice about it, we've been getting the bigger fish right now. With the sun going down, these fish have moved into about 15 feet of water, which is typical. At nighttime, I just got a pickup right there. You can see my line is ripping through it. I'm gonna go ahead and set up on this guy. There he is, right there. Oh, there we go. Tighten that drag down a little. Look at that. Tighten it. One more click. We, we just, we're out of here in the dark, and the only thing that's going to put us on these fish, because there's really no structure on this bottom, is our electronics, which is kind of showing us where the schools are off to the side. Went about 15 feet of water. Here's my eel, which is a good sign. You know, anytime an eel gets smoked up the line like that, that means a fish hit it pretty hard. But this is definitely a 20 plus pound fish. He just came up on the surface. He's done. Oh, that's a nice uh, release right there. That's a nice release. That's a, <laughs> a lot of times, if you fish with a good buddy and they don't want to see you get the fish, they'll twist the hook quick, give it a quick jerk like that. I was like taking candy from a baby right there. <laughs> just a little skin hook right there. <laughs> that's there you why go. you try to land your own fish. We're almost coming up. On slack tide, which a lot of guys swear the biggest fish are caught during slack tide because yeah, they don't want to work. We're coming up on another section of to the east side of Scorton's Creek. Typically when it dumps out, you get a lot of fish that hang out front here and slide down the beach. It's a really good spot. You picked up a 50 here last year, didn't you? Yep, right he, around this location. Same time of year, everything. Yep. These kind of eels. Yep, nighttime. Might have to cover darkness. <laughs> yep. Night's not over. No, we've had that northeast wind that we've talked about all night about, you know, kind of pushing everything in. Although we don't have much of a breeze right now, but it seems to set up the fishing, doesn't it? It does, you know, and especially this time of year, you don't really need a heavy northeast blow to trigger a good bite. So. And you know what's crazy is that if we were on the south side where I generally fish down along the islands, if we had a northeast, I'd probably think about staying in the barn. Yep. You know, because it'd be pushing everything out down along the islands, it'd be pushing it out. I like to get that southwest wind in there, kind of push everything up on shore. But the northeast in here, coming off of Cape Cod Bay, is going to push everything right up right. on the shore. And there's a lot of bait out here right now. The mackerel have been here pretty much all season. Um, you know, we got some uh, peanut bunker, a baby sea heron. So it's pretty full of bait. It's getting to that time of year where the fish are putting on the feet to head south. So. If you guys are at any of the boat shows, January, February, and March, and you want to see what Truck Skin will do, stop by the Simrad booth. I guarantee you right now, you'll learn something, as we have tonight, as far as how you can put your electronics to use when it's nighttime to catch big fish. Absolutely. There we go. There we go. There we go. 
made the decision to just start using the structure scan again and let it go to work for us. We've got triples now. We are on triples. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, nice fish. Look at that. Keeper. You got some color on that? Tripled up, guys, at night. I got your rod if you need it. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> I was feeling good about myself there for a second. Did that? Did Jimmy, hold nice on to that thing a second. Rob, it's funny. I was feeling good about mine, but look at the size difference there. I think Jim's could eat mine. Mine's a respectable fish. But that's just a different class altogether. I think I'm in, I'm in Russ Stevens' class. Pounds. Hang on, I'm coming over to you in a second. That's a nice one. You got him? Yeah. That is a nice fish. When sometimes you just don't stack up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was feeling real good about myself. Go. Trying to show you how to use your structure scan to locate fish at night, and we certainly did. Yep. Nice. Beautiful fish, guys. Really, really want to thank you, Captain, for running the boat, Ross for, for uh, hooking us up with the electronics early on, maybe yep. two years ago, and really understanding today what it means. Yep, my pleasure, guys. Great night out in the water. What a way to end it. If you'd like to learn more about today's show, log on to onthewater.com from the Navico crew. Chris Megan and on the water. Thanks for tuning in. There you go, buddy, huh? <laughs>